Jamjum Pharma sees a 94% profit surge and Tesla sets a quarterly delivery record. You're watching The Daily Brief with Forbes. I'm Rami Afarad. Jamjum Pharmaceuticals saw a 94% year-on-year surge in its Q1 profit to $22.5 million, driven by higher revenues. Q1 revenues rose 23.9% year-on-year to $80.5 million. The higher revenues are attributed to strong demand for Jamjum's branded generic products in its markets, as well as price increases of some key products and better-than-expected growth of the overall market. Regional Sovereign Wealth Fund saw marked improvement in the Global Sovereign Wealth Fund's Governance, Sustainability and Resilience Scoreboard for 2023. Saudi's Public Investment Fund rose 32%, with a report saying its annual report is a rare display of transparency. Oman's OIA rose 28%, with the report saying it's pursuing operational excellence and forming a new framework to align with SDGs. And Abu Dhabi's ADQ rose 24% as it recently published its first sustainability report. Iraq's oil export revenues slightly dropped on a monthly basis to $7.1 billion in June from $7.3 billion in May. Official statistics put total crude exports at 100.1 million barrels in June. The bulk of crude, about 98.8 million barrels, was from oil fields in central and southern Iraq, shipped via the port of Basra. Oil exports from the Al Qayyara oil field in Nineveh Governorate in northern Iraq stood at a little over 1 million barrels. Tesla beat analysts' expectations in Q2, delivering nearly half a million vehicles despite a difficult market. It's an 83% increase over the same period last year and a 10% rise from the previous quarter. Analysts had expected deliveries to come in under 450,000. As competition in the EV sector heats up, Tesla has made several price cuts in the U.S., Europe and Asia this year. Analysts say these cuts played major dividends as demand appears to remain very strong and production efficiencies have allowed for the massive deliveries. BYD, the China EV and battery leader backed by Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway, saw sales nearly double in June from a year earlier to 253,000. BYD's market cap of $100 billion tops that of both GM and Ford. Meanwhile, smaller Chinese EV maker Li Auto also saw a big year-on-year -year sales gain of 150% in June to 32,575 vehicles. The companies were boosted by improved economic growth in China and the end of industry disruptions from COVID-related lockdowns. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen will visit Beijing on Thursday for meetings with senior Chinese officials on a broad range of issues. These include U.S. concerns about a new Chinese counter-espionage law. Officials say Yellen's long-anticipated trip is part of a push by President Biden to deepen communications between the world's two largest economies, stabilize the relationship, and minimize the risks of mistakes when disagreements do arise. It comes after Secretary of State Antony Blinken agreed with President Xi to stabilize ties and avoid conflict. Apple has reportedly been forced to make major cuts to production forecasts for its augmented reality headset. Apple's only assembler of the AR headset, the Vision Pro, is Chinese contract manufacturer Luxshare. Luxshare is reportedly preparing to make fewer than 400,000 units of Vision Pro in 2024. It's a significant cut from an earlier sales target of 1 million units of the headset in the first year. The scaled back targets are due to the complexity of the headset's design and difficulties in production. And the latest and likely the last installment in the Indiana Jones franchise lassoed the competition at North American box offices over the weekend. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny starring Harrison Ford in the role of the archaeologist he first made famous more than 40 years ago earned about $60 million in its domestic market and likely $70 million overseas. With that in the booted animated sequel Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse from the top spot. I'm Ramia Faraj. This is the Daily Brief. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.